Hi, in the next couple of videos, we're going to look at um, using render layers and AOVs in Maya. So uh, rendering out your images in something other than just the beauty pass. So I've got a scene here uh, that we'll use as our example. And if we look at the Arnold render view, if I just render like this, this is the beauty pass. So it's got everything in it. It's got all objects in it. Um, it has uh, all the different AOVs. AOVs, we'll talk about more later, but are arbitrary output values where you can s separately render out things like just the diffuse colors, the direct colors, the indirect colors, speculars, and so on. So I just have a few examples here so you know what I mean. Um, but we'll look at that, but we'll also look at using Maya's render setup. So here is the render setup window, and you can see here that you can have many different render layers. Uh, and the simplest thing that you can do with this really is to, let's say, render out the background object. So in this case, let me just turn that off. So right now, if we look at the render setup window, um, this is the master layer up here. This is what it always starts with. So this is everything in your scene. And you can see that we're looking at the contents of the master layer now because its visibility icon, the eye here, is uh, enabled. But I've also got a background layer. So for example, I can just click on that. And it's just a big plane in the background. Well, it's a hemisphere, a flattened hemisphere. I also have a mid-ground layer. So I have this other object I'm calling a trabeculae, but it's just a piece of geometry. And then I've got a foreground layer. I've got a floaties layer, my hero cell layer, and then another sort of utility layer that I'm using to output depth. We'll talk about all of those things as we go along. Uh, but the simplest thing, and the thing that we'll start with now, is just rendering things out that are in the background, the midground, and the foreground. And sometimes this is all you might use the render layers for. And it's just a, a simple way to render things out that will allow you to take these renders into your compositing program. I'll be using After Effects. And put them in layers, one on top of the other. And it allows you to interact with them separately and apply different effects to them. Um, so let's just take a look at that for a second. So here we are in After Effects, and I've already rendered out some of these things. Uh, and we'll go back into Maya and set up the renders so you can see what's going on. But the simplest way that you can approach this is uh, just to build up your scene one layer at a time. So you can see that I've got a render for the background. I've got a separate render for the midground object separate set of renders for the foreground objects and then there's some other stuff going on here but let's look at this for now and so what are the what are the reasons for doing this well the first reason if you look in the timeline here because my camera is not moving the background layer this one here i only need one frame of it it's not moving the camera is not moving so there's no reason to render out the full 90 frames of this short animation so by rendering this separately, I can save some render time. Same with the midground object. Nothing actually happens to this object. So um, I'm rendering this out just as a single frame. And then in the foreground, where there is some action, there's some animation here. These cells are actually moving around a little bit. Uh, I've got to render these out for the full 90 frames. And so uh, anything that's moving, of course, has to be rendered out more than a single frame to get the the animation. Um, and if the camera is moving, then in, in actuality, everything else is moving relative to the camera. So you have to render up the full frames for that. So the other reason for doing something like this is it gives you a little more leeway if you want to um, change certain elements. So for example, if I want to add sort of a kind of cheap depth of field, I could just blur out the background and mid-ground objects. Now the background is already kind of just a blurry color. Um, which, since my camera isn't moving, I could have just done this in um, After Effects. However, I, I'm also using it to light the scene slightly, so you can see there's kind of this greenish cast on these cells here. So it actually is having an effect in 3D. Uh, 
which is why I didn't do it in 2D. Um, but because I have them on separate layers, I can go into the midground object. Now I didn't name these appropriately, and I'll show you how to do it correctly when we get back into Maya. Uh, but so let's say this object here, um, if I want to go back and oops, uh, oh, where am I here? If I want to go into the composition and just blur this out because it's on a separate layer, I can just go select that layer, right click effect and just use, you know, a Gaussian blur or something and just blur that out. Right? So rather than doing depth of field in camera, if it's something like this, you can get away with you know, using this. Maybe Gaussian blur isn't the best, but there are lots of other blur types that you can use in here. I've got Frischluft out of focus. I can try that. That's acting, trying to act more like a camera blur. Um, it also allows you to do things like change the color. So if I didn't want the color of the background to be that kind of greenish blue, I can right click on this, add an effect, color correction, something like hue and saturation. And I can change these values so I can turn up the saturation and change the lightness or I can do a chroma shift uh, to get a different color. And there are other ways to selectively change colors. But you know, I could do something very different like this. Same goes for the foreground layer. Um, I can go in, and if I want to make this a bit punchier, I could go in and add uh, a curves, oops, a curves effect, you know, increase the saturation and brightness, uh, or the contrast and brightness and saturation. This looks horrible, don't get me wrong, but I can work on all of these things separately. So in this video, let's just look at how to set up a, a mid-ground, foreground, and background render. Okay, so we'll come back to this. So let's hop on over to Maya. And I'll just save as this scene. And I'm going to delete these layers and we will rebuild them. Okay, so we're back to the master layer here. So let's just get this on screen. And so the master layer has render settings, all the AOVs that we're going to use, the lights that we're going to use. And we'll get into this uh, in a later video. But for now, let's make a render layer that will just hold our background object. So this button creates a new layer and I'll call this BG layer, so background layer. Now, the reason you want to name these is because you can uh, name your renders according to the render layer name, so it's a good idea. And so this is a render layer, but to put things on the layer, you have to add what's called a collection. So we'll create a collection, and we'll call this uh, BG Geo. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just calling it geo because it's a piece of geometry I'm putting in here. You can have different collections for different things. You can have whatever you have a, a collection for the particles in the scene, or you can put lots of different things in the same collection. It just depends on what your needs are and how you want to organize it. So now you see over here, there's the property editor for this collection. And these are the things you want to include in the collection. So to add something, you can just grab the object, which is called the background plane, and middle mouse drag it into here. And now it's part of this collection. So if I want to see this layer, I just have to click on its eye. And only one eye can be active at any time. So um, you can only see one layer at a time. OK, so that's good. So now let's create a midground layer. Let me just move this over a little bit so you can see. And I'll create a new layer, and we'll call this midground layer. Create a collection, and this will be called MGGO. And this is for Trebek 1. So we'll just drag this in here. If we look at this layer, we have this. Now, 
uh, we, won't, we won't talk about this in this video, but all the lights in the scene will be applied to each layer. You can override that um, by changing which lights are active in each layer, but you don't do it through collections. You do it through this light linking option up here. But as I say, we'll talk about that later. So let's now create a final layer for the foreground. We'll call this foreground layer. Okay, and let's just go back to our master layer. And here we want to select these cells and this other Trebek. And we're not going to include the hero cell. It's going to go on its own layer. And just so you know, let me just play this animation. Nothing much happens. These cells in the foreground move. They're floating particles. And then this thing comes from behind and goes in front. And that's set up to show how you can composite out things that are neither foreground nor midground nor background, but things that are sometimes behind objects and then go in front of them. And that requires a slightly more complex setup, but we'll get to that later. So the foreground layer, we, of course, we need a collection. And we can add the things we need here. So what do I have here? I've got this repro mesh. So I made this with mash and the main Trebek. I can add this here. So now if we look at this layer, so we can see it's got the things on that we want. I'm just going to forget about those little, all these floaty particles for now. Let's just concentrate on this. And so if I open Arnold and do little sample render. It's going to render the visible layer. Okay, so let's just save this as an image. And so this looks good. All the lights in the scene, there's actually only one real light in the scene, uh, an area light to the upper left, and you can see it's specular here. So they're lighting the scene. Um, there's a sheen on this, so that's where the greenish color, greenish blue color is coming from on here. But if we go back to the master layer, and now you can see it's rendering it out. And it's, once it's finished, save that image. Let's compare the images here. So obviously the floaty particles are here, the other mid-ground and background things are here. But look at the uh, the greenish cast on the cells here. So in the master layer, we can see that. In the foreground layer, we don't. And the reason for that, I think, is obvious, is that the big bright green background object is not in the foreground layer to cast light onto this. So that background object actually has that color in its emission attribute. So it actually is casting its color out into the scene. So in cases like this, we have to add other objects into the scene that we don't want to render. We don't want them to appear in the render because in this case, we want to have this rendering just like this with its alpha cutout like this. So it's transparent here, it's opaque here. Um, but we need the effects of that background object to appear here. So let's do that. So this is why you might need more than one collection and this will introduce the idea of overriding certain qualities. So we'll right click on this and create a new collection and we'll call this uh, foreground eg geo. Okay, it's getting confusing now, but anyway. Uh, and then we'll bring the background plane in here. And so now if we look here, the background plane appears in here, which is not what we want. We want its effects, but we don't want it. So we have to override something here. So let's look at this collection and the property editor. So this is the thing that's in the collection and you can add overrides. So what does that mean? We can add changes to attributes on objects or materials or whatever uh, on a layer and have that effect happen only on this layer. So it's overriding its normal condition. So in this case, we want to select the background plane. Let me just hide this for a sec. So here we have the background plane selected. 
and we can go into its render stats as one option. So render stats show um, how the object will appear in a render. And with all these things turned on, it's primary visibility, so it will appear, it will cast shadows, it will receive shadows, it will be visible in reflections, visible in refractions, and so on. So in this case, we do want it to be visible in reflections. That's what's giving us this green cast here. But we don't want to be able to see it. So we can turn off its primary visibility only in this layer by middle mouse dragging primary visibility onto this absolute layer override. Now you'll see something happen here. Primary visibility turns orange. That means there's an override on it for the visible layer. And if I turn it off here and render, now it's gone from our render, but its effects are still felt and it's not blocking our alpha channel. However, if we go back to the background layer, for example, and turn that on. It renders just normally because you'll see now over here that there is no override on this layer. Okay, pretty straightforward. So now if we go back into the render layers, you can see that a couple things are added here. So here's our original collection, creates another sub collection. Now, maybe I'm not doing this in the most efficient way, I'm not sure, but... Um, and then here's the absolute override on the object or the attribute that we dragged over, primary visibility. And you can turn it on and off here too. So I have to make this layer visible. We can see it's orange here. So I can turn that on and off in here, and it is also turning on and off over there. Another way that you can do this, so if I select this um, collection again, let's say I didn't want it to appear in refractions. Instead of dragging this over to the absolute override, in the attribute editor I can right click on the name of the attribute and say create absolute override for visible layer. So um, this is something I always mess up. I forget to have the layer I want to work on visible so the eye turned on and selected and uh, that's that has to be done so it knows which layer to apply this to. So now you can see it's added an override here. The override is also over here and we can turn this on and off and it will only affect this layer. And then we can delete that because I actually don't need that. And so those are the key elements for creating background, midground, and foreground layers. Now in this simple example, this is pretty easy because the camera's not moving, these things aren't changing position really. And this one slight thing that we had to do to get the, the greenish cast from the background onto our foreground geometry uh, is not that hard to do, but it introduces that idea of adding an absolute override. So in the next video, we'll come back and look at how we can set up a layer to do something like this where the hero cell goes behind and then goes in front. So we'll come back and look at that. Thanks.